Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking about the difference between DNA and RNA. Now DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and that spelling, if you're interested, is at the bottom there and RNA is ribonucleic acid. Now both of these are found within the cell and ultimately act as our genetic code. Our DNA is our genetic code, it's what makes us who we are. And our RNA is used in um, a process known as protein synthesis. And what that does is take our genetic code and make it purposeful. It, it reads those genes, which are portions of the DNA, and it makes proteins from them. Now, this video primarily is aimed at key stage 4, key, more key stage 5, because that's where you would really cover RNA in some depth. So what we're going to do in this video is outline the key differences between these two structures. Now DNA, just to highlight here, this one over to the right, that is DNA. And this molecule I've got over on the left, that is RNA. So we're just clear on the diagram there. Now, in summary, of the two, RNA is more versatile than DNA. It's capable of performing numerous diverse tasks in an organism, but DNA is more stable and holds more complex information for longer periods of time. So what we're going to do, we're going to break this down into individual bits. We'll look at the structure of the two and the function of both. So, and we'll make on, on the sides of the video, I'm going to make a few key notes. Both of these structures contain a five carbon sugar. So let's write that down there. Contains a five C sugar. And likewise, the RNA contains a five carbon sugar. But one key difference is what that sugar composes of. In RNA, that sugar is known as ribose. But the sugar is different in DNA. In DNA, that sugar is deoxyribose. And I'll just structurally show you why they're different. So if we were to focus on... Um, the DNA, if we just take DNA and I'll just draw down the side here. In, if we're just focusing on this five carbon ring, I'm not going to draw all of the things that branch off. Um, like for example, we've got a carbon branching here, hydrogen down here. Um, if we just draw this, we'll put an H and an OH in place, an H here, and on this side we've got an H. And this is where a base would join. I'll explain more about that in a moment. At this bottom right point, for DNA, what we see is there is an H, a hydrogen, attached to that carbon there. Now, in RNA, in a ribose sugar, that H is actually an OH, a hydroxyl group. So, just for completeness sake, I won't draw the whole thing in. I'll just highlight that particular bit. So, we have an H. And over here we have an OH. And that's one of the key differences. So it means we've got a different type of sugar. So in RNA we've got ribose, in DNA we've got deoxyribose. Now each um, molecule comprises of what are called nucleobases. Now each of these contain many of the similar ones. And these nucleobases have particular names. And the names of which you can see in the central image. So if we, let's focus on the RNA first. We can see an RNA making within that single stranded molecule, and I will come back to the fact that it is a single strand. We've got cytosine, which is given the letter C. We've got guanine, which is given the letter G. We have adenine, A, and uracil, given the letter U. If we look at DNA, we can see that DNA contains the nuclear bases cytosine, so that matches. We've got a guanine there. We have adenine. But in the DNA, rather than having uracil, we have thymine. So we have a slightly different nuclear base 
in DNA compared to RNA. But one, one key thing to say is that whenever we look at a, a nucleotide, which if, in quick terms is basically a, a sugar, a phosphate, and one of the bases, so that that grouped molecule there, each nucleotide for DNA and RNA contains one of four bases. So there are four bases for DNA, four bases for RNA. So even though we've got thymine and a uracil, they are similar in the fact that they both have four possible bases that they can be comprised of. So we've got cytosine, guanine, adenine and thymine in DNA, cytosine, guanine, adenine and uracil in RNA. And I said about the, the nature of it being a single chain, that's a key difference to know. That's one of the key things um, when looking at the structure of these two. DNA is a double polynucleotide chain. So poly means many, a nucleotide is, as I said, if we look at one sugar, phosphate and base on its own, so a nucleotide chain would be that whole strand. So in DNA we have a double double nucleotide chain and in RNA we have a single nucleotide chain. And you can see that the, the way that the DNA um, chains sort of wrap around one another form a helical shape and because there's two chains it's where it gets its name the, or name of the shape the double helix from. So we say that DNA has a double helix shape, it's because it has this double polynucleotide chain. Now let's think about stability. RNA is generally unstable, it's easily broken down. So I'll make a note of that, it is generally unstable. It's easily broken down. Ribose sugar is more reactive because of C to OH bonds. So because you've got carbon to hydroxyl bonds in the ribonucleic acids, so in, so if I just put a little asterisk by this OH that I was referring to before, because of that bond, it makes RNA more reactive and it's not stable in alkaline conditions. RNA has larger grooves, which makes it easier to be attacked, if you like, by enzymes. In comparison, DNA... is more stable, it's a more stable molecule. And that's because the deoxyribose sugar in DNA is less reactive because it just has carbon to hydrogen bonds. So you might guess that it is stable in alkaline conditions and DNA has smaller grooves. So it makes it harder for enzymes to sort of at attack, if you like, or destroy parts of the molecule in, in, in a sense. So there's a key difference there. RNA is generally an unstable molecule, DNA is much more stable. Now, RNA, depending on the type of RNA, this molecule is found in a cell's nucleus, its cytoplasm, and its ribosome. So we'll make a note of that. So found in the nucleus, it's found in cytoplasm, and at the ribosome, what's called ribosomal RNA. Now in comparison, DNA is simply found in the nucleus of a cell and in the mitochondria. So we have DNA in the nucleus and I'm just going to shrink the screen a little, shrink the screen a little bit just to help see some of these terms a little bit easier. Found in the mitochondria. Now, we've talked a little bit about the structure. Let's think more about how it actually functions. RNA is synthesized from DNA when needed, whereas DNA is actually self-replicating. So let's make a note of that one. RNA is synthesized from DNA when needed, but in comparison, DNA is simply self 
replicating. And if we were to go a little bit more into detail, if we just come back to the structure for a moment, both molecules, or in both molecules rather, the nuclear bases are attached to their sugar phosphate backbone. That's one thing to, to identify. We've said that there are different nuclear bases, but they're both attached to the sugar phosphate backbone. And in RNA, the helix geometry of RNA is of what's called the A form. So this is a little bit of extra detail. I usually talk about this when you're doing IB, not so much at A level. So the helix geometry of the RNA is in the A form, and the RNA strands are continually made, broken down, and reused. And the RNA is actually more resistant to damage by UV rays. In comparison, the helix geometry of DNA is of the B, to, or B form. DNA is protected in the nucleus as it's tightly packed. But it, too, um, can be damaged, but to a less extent, by um, ultraviolet rays, exposure to UV rays. So there's a little something in that. So there we've got the key differences between DNA and RNA. Both contain a 5-carbon sugar. In DNA, it's deoxyribose. In RNA, it's ribose. In both cases, each nucleotide has one of four bases. In DNA, it's C, G, A, and T. In RNA, it's C, G, A, and U for uracil. DNA is a double polynucleotide chain, and RNA is a single polynucleotide chain. In terms of stability, DNA is much more stable because of the less reactive CH bonds, whereas RNA is generally unstable and easily broken down because of the COH bonds, the hydroxyl bonds. DNA is found typically in the nucleus and the mitochondria, whereas RNA is found not only in the nucleus but also in the cytoplasm and ribosome. And whilst DNA is self-replicating, RNA is actually synthesized from DNA when it's needed. So there are the few key things to note when asked about the differences between DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, ribonucleic acid. Okay, hope that helps.